Hi everyone, so uh, my snails have been busy. Um, I did a clean out and did my usual egg search that I do roughly once a week, once every other week. Put it this way, in a two week span I've checked at least once and oh, I found a clutch of eggs. Now this is the first time I've had snails lay eggs for ages because um, I've seen Alvin, Simon and Theodore and Morty are only just reaching maturity because um, I had them from babies. Um, Rick is the oldest one but obviously he lived alone for ages until I had Alvin, Simon, Theodore and Morty. Um, so obviously he didn't have any eggs. Um, they are hermaphrodite so they are male and female but they do tend to need another snail at some point in the mix to give them the information they need to make eggs and as you can see they've been busy now I know I saw Rick and Simon and I saw Rick and Theodore I think it was no Alvin Alvin and Simon my two biggest babies and Rick I saw them mate um, so these are clutches from one of them one of those meetings so they're either Rick's uh, which is possible Rick has laid eggs in the past um, they're either Rick's or Alvin's or Simon's I reckon I'd more go for Rick or Alvin because they're the two biggest you tend to find if two snails breed it tends to be the bigger of the two will lay the eggs so they've been busy so what I'm going to do now is find out exactly how many eggs they laid I'm trying to figure out if it's one, one snails clutch or possibly two um, and what I'll do, while I'm counting the eggs, in the meantime, I'll show you me cleaning the snails out and finding the eggs. Um, and then I'll come back and show you how many eggs I've found. So first of all, when you do a uh, clean each week um, and an egg search, what you need to do is remove the snails and the current decoration you've got in the tank. Um, because obviously you're going to have to go through all the soil and everything. So basically you need all the ornaments, like the decor and the uh, animals out the way. I have a large mat which I could put them on with um, a load of lettuce and stuff. So I just put all the snails to one side so that they could sit and enjoy some uh, lettuce um, and have a break for a bit while I um, cleaned out the tank. So if you look, this is their favourite spot for three of them to hide. Um, more, uh, Theodore likes to go underneath the um, sphagnum moss and the other two like to go behind the pots. So that's why I always leave a gap at the back. But first of all, I'm just removing the decorations, which is just some fake plants, some fake leaves and the plant pots and stuff. And at the front there, that is Alvin or Rick, one of the two. Um, he was busy just having a bit of cuttlefish till I moved the tank. So here what I'm doing is sticking my finger under their foot to break the suction so that they come off the uh, glass nice and easily. And then that means it's easy for them to, remo to move as well. As I've explained before, if you're wondering why Theodore's shell looks a little bit twisted at the end, um, I think Theodore is a little bit of a runt, um, but he's my pet and just because his shell looks a bit weird, I'm not going to get rid of him or anything. Um, he's perfectly happy, he's growing nicely, um, I'm quite happy that he's happy, so I'm going to keep him and look after him. Um, I don't breed snails anyway, so it's perfectly fine. Um, but obviously if you were breeding snails, you wouldn't want to keep a runt like Theodore, because obviously it adds poor genetics into the um, the breeding stock but I don't breed them. Now as you can see as I've gone through I've disturbed a clutch of eggs um, so the important thing is to, is to get all the eggs out unless you want more snails but really I wouldn't advise breeding them um, because there are a lot of genetic problems and a lot of inbreeding with the um, follicles in the pet trade so it's not the best decision to um, breed them um, plus if you if you kept the eggs and then you, all of them were successful you're going to have like hundreds of babies to deal with which is too much for anybody 
Um, so first of all, what I'm doing is I'm just using their water dish and I'm just scooping up the eggs as best as I can. <clears throat> and always make sure you go back through the soil afterwards, even when you think you've got them all, because I can guarantee that look, there's always one that has escaped. So as you can see, they get laid in one little place and you get one little clutch of eggs like this. Um, and I'll show you a bit more about the eggs in detail afterwards. Um, if you wanted, you could use a little spoon to scoop them out if, you've, if you're not confident with fetching them out of the soil like I am. Um, I'm just literally getting my fingers and going, the, getting the ends of my fingers and going underneath where the eggs are and scooping them out. Um, you can pick them out gently as well, if as long as you're gentle. Um, they're not going to like squish in your hand and they're not... Um, like wet and squishy or anything. Uh, they actually feel like little chicken eggs. They're like little crispy, crunchy things. Um, so, you know, they don't feel sticky or wet or anything like that. So as you can see, I'm going through the soil and I'm finding the odd one here and there. So I'm just scooping them out and making sure I've got them. Um, Obviously, it is a bit better if you go a little bit gentler through the soil than I did. I wasn't expecting any eggs because I haven't had any for ages. So I just went through the soil and, of course, I've scattered the clutch everywhere. <laughs> and I'll show you later on just how many eggs there were. And that's why it took me so long to pick them all out. Um, so, yeah. So all I'm going to do now is once I've scooped out all the ones I can see in this area, basically, I'll have to go through every single handful of dirt that's in this tank. Um, to make sure that I've removed all of the eggs because um, obviously I don't want to be dealing with hundreds of babies um, and yeah it's just if you don't want babies this is the job you have to do and you have to spend the time going through and making sure you've removed them all now if you look I've just discovered a second clutch um, so I reckon I'll say later in the because I never I didn't realise this in, at the time. Um, but this yeah, this is two clutches of eggs, and I did have Alvin and Rick both went missing in the tank for about twenty four forty eight hours. I didn't see them at all, um, and normally they're the first two out for food. So I think it's those two that have laid the eggs, and now seeing on the video that what where one clutch was and where the other group was, yeah, this is not one clutch. This is two. So I reckon it's Alvin's first clutch and one that Rick's done. Um, and some of the eggs were ever so slightly different. So I do think it's two different snails that have laid these. So here I'm just going through the second clutch and just checking through the soil and making sure I haven't missed anything. Luckily, because they're bright, these ones were like bright yellow and white. Um, they stand out really well from the soil. So it's quite easy to spot them and take them out and all I'm doing now is going through the soil a bit more carefully just thoroughly disturbing the soil raking through it with my fingers just to make sure I've got everything and as you can see as I went back through the soil there there was one I'd missed so it's always worth um, going through the soil a couple of times to make sure and then my soil here um, is a bit on the damp side so what I also did later on is took handfuls of soil out of the tank, squeezed the water out and then put the soil back in. Um, I find snails do better if you don't change the substrate too often. Um, what I tend to do is if it gets a bit soggy I'll squeeze the excess water out and then reuse what's in there because the snails benefit from the beneficial bacteria. And I spot clean regularly to remove snail poops and stuff and uh, manky veg and stuff. So I feel confident that the, the soil is nice and fresh for them. And then what I did was I then laid out the eggs on some paper towel and left them to one side while I finished with the tank. I'm just wiping down the sides with a dry paper towel. I find dry paper towels are very good for getting soil off the tank, off the sides of the tank, um, off the glass and also for removing poops. So after going through them, I could see there's some variation in the eggs. So I think I, I definitely do think it's two snails. 
And obviously looking back on the video, I could see it was two separate piles, two clutches. Um, and I went through and had a look at them all. And it turns out there were 302 eggs in total. So obviously if I didn't do regular checks, I could have potentially ended up with another 300 snails. So always make sure you check your tanks. And this is them all nice and clean and uh, having a little nibble of some lettuce leaves. Um, I do still give them lettuce occasionally, but it's part of a very varied diet. They've normally got lots of leafy greens and veggies and carrots and things. Um, they're just having some lettuce as a little bit of a snack um, before I put some more food in. Um, and I'll put a fresh piece of cuttlefish in. Um, I'm going to have in a later video a recipe for something else that you can give them if you can't get hold of cuttlefish. Because recently I've been having trouble being able to get hold of it. Um, I could order it online but it's a lot more expensive than what I normally pay in my local pet stores. Um, but I'll leave that for another video. Um, so as you can see they're here having a little munch. Um, and you can see the size difference between the other snails and Theodore. Theodore, I reckon, is some sort of a runt, and he's got like a slightly twisted, like his shell slightly bent. It's it's he's a weird one. Um, I still love him though, so he's still going to be um part of the snail family. Uh, and as you can see, the others are doing great. Um, in the middle of the three brown ones, that's actually Morty, believe it or not. Morty has just shot up in size and caught up with Alvin really quickly so as you can see Alvin and Morty are the same size Simon's not far off now and then obviously Rick's still the massive one and then Theodore's the tiniest um so yeah they're nice and clean I've rearranged the foliage a bit because I know now where Theodore and and Simon like to sleep so I've put the foliage on their side because they like to go under foliage but also on the right hand side I've left a space so I can put a nice spot pile of sphagnum moss because I have got some, uh, some of them refer, prefer to hide in the sphagnum moss and need obviously room to do so. And obviously it gives Rick a bit more room so he can burrow into the soil as well. Because um, I'm finding now they're not using the smaller plant pots so I've took those out. I've just kept the two big ones which are underneath all those leaves that you can see in the picture. Um... So yeah, make sure you always check for eggs and do a regular egg check. Um, bare minimum would be every other week you need to check. Um, like, you know, once every two weeks would be the bare minimum. I would recommend checking every week, especially through the summer months. I personally don't tend to find they lay through the winter months, but obviously it depends if you keep your tank temperature constant throughout the year you could have them at any time um fullickers are quite happy at room temperature as long as it's you know it's decent room temperature and not freezing cold so um i tend to find mine tend to do they tend to lay eggs when it's like summer when it's actually really warm in the house the rest of the time it's like a standard temperature i tend to keep them but the minimum temperature i'd like to i like to keep them is uh 20 degrees um celsius um and then the maximum would be about 25 um i tend to find once it gets to about 25 they start acting a bit weird and they all shoot up to the top of the tank because they're trying to cool down um so i tend to keep them around but anywhere between 20 and 22 and they seem to love that temperature range for these particular snails um so yeah, normal room temperature is perfectly fine for these. And then I just use a heat mat when it's at the night time, if it drops a bit cooler at the night time in the winter. Um, but yeah, so always check for eggs and make sure you get rid of them. Don't release them into the wild because obviously that's illegal. Um, and that way you can concentrate and focus on looking after your snails that you've got and keep them in tip top condition. And also at the same time, not wear yourself out because you're trying to look after hundreds of snails, which is beyond anyone's capabilities, really, unless you're working on a snail farm, um, which we don't tend to have in the UK. Um, so, yeah, I've uh, cleaned them all out. That's what they look like. And uh, hope you found this video useful. Just give you a better idea what you're looking for when you're searching for eggs. 
um, and the next video I will have um, all the different options you can have for getting rid of the eggs if you don't want them because obviously no one wants 300 and odd African lens nails um, so yeah hope you find this video useful thank you very much for watching and I'll see you in the next one bye for now